Hi, my name is Jamani. And I'm Nazha. We're professional marine guides who spend most of our days in the water showing divers and snorkelers our amazing coral reefs of Belize. And we're here today to share with you some important information about the Belize Coral Watch program and how you can become involved in conserving Belize's coral reefs. Belize has extensive coral reef systems that provide habitat for a wide variety of animals that depend on each other for survival. Coral reefs provide shelter for important fishery exports like lobster, conch, and fish. The natural beauty of the coral reefs also attracts many visitors to Belize. This supports our tourism industry, which is dependent on a healthy living reef to survive. But coral reefs are living things, and like us, they too are being negatively impacted by the unusual weather patterns we've been experiencing over the past few decades. A change in weather patterns is known as global warming or climate change, and some immediate effects are warmer temperatures and rising sea levels. Let's visit our experts to find out how climate change is affecting our coral reefs. Climate change is a natural occurrence. However, since about 1850, we have noticed that that natural climate change is now being exacerbated. And we are very confident now that we know the cause of that. And that is, it is being produced by the greenhouse gases that we humans are emitting into the atmosphere. All these things are producing excessive gases that are causing an increase in temperature which we have never seen before. Climate change is definitely here and it's bringing with it higher temperatures that will continue to impact corals, not only in Belize but globally. Corals thrive under certain conditions, one of which being water temperatures between 78 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientific studies have shown that when water temperatures become greater than 86 degrees Fahrenheit and stays that way for over several weeks, it causes corals to become stressed, expel their zooxanthellae, leading to what we call coral bleaching. In order to survive, the corals will have to adapt to the higher temperatures. The Mesoamerican Reef Coral Watch program began in 2008 through the efforts of the Nature Conservancy. We were seeing coral bleaching occurring all across the region from Mexico through Belize, Honduras and Guatemala and um, we needed to find a way to be able to, to figure out where this was occurring and when. So we came up with this regional program in order to bring together practitioners such as you know, tour guides, tour operators, tourists and scientists to, to start to address what was happening on the reefs throughout the region. In order to identify resilient reefs, the program is depending heavily on volunteers like us and you to monitor sites that are regularly visited and to submit reports on the condition of the reef. There's a fine balance that, that needs to be kept within the, within the reef systems. And when different stresses such as high water temperature or high sedimentation starts occurring, some corals will react very quickly and will start to, to lose their symbiotic algae that they have within their tissue, which can eventually lead to death. Other corals seem to be resistant to it. They don't, they don't get affected as quickly. Or they do get affected, but they recover very, very rapidly while other corals die. In Belize, the Coral Watch program is being coordinated by Ecomar a local NGO promoting conservation through education. The site name is South Gallows, and the reef zone, we're actually in the four reef zone, right? Because we're outside the reef crest, if you look Locating on. and protecting resilient reefs along the Belize Barrier Reef System is a primary goal of the Coral Watch program. Volunteering is easy. Anyone who dives or snorkels can participate in the program. We've held training workshops for dive masters and snorkel masters to show them how the Coral Watch program works so they can share that knowledge with their tour groups. Volunteers learn to identify corals, coral disease, and how to monitor and report coral bleaching. This not only increases our data, but it promotes the cause of reef preservation. Well, I think all tour guides need to do this program. We will not be able to take care of it if we don't know about it. Whenever you see any damage or anything like that, you just uh, document it. Um, so it's, it's very easy, anybody could do it. For me, it's a good information 
that I can give the tourists. That was really fun, just incredibly educational. Once the tour guide showed me what to look for, it was so easy to spot the bleaching and the disease, and I learned so much, had a great time, um, really learned it some, something very important that we should all be looking for and helping with. The work that the volunteers are gathering is critical to this early warning system. We really need more Coral Watch volunteers in Belize to submit regular reports on the sites they visit. It is only when we analyze the data can we say that at such and such a site between February and August there was no bleaching, but then in September the corals began bleaching but ended in January. Without the monthly reports, we cannot make these statements because we do not have the supporting documentation. Once the reports generated by the volunteers of the Coral Watch program indicate that the reef is experiencing significant coral bleaching, then the next step of the National Coral Bleaching Response Plan is set in place. Members of the National Coral Reef Monitoring Network meet to review the submitted reports and they schedule coordinated monitoring for coral bleaching in Belize. What we do is, in response to early warnings of bleaching cited by different groups, dive people, dive shops, tourism, fishermen, um, we go out there and we check to see whether or not, first of all, it, it truly is bleaching. And second of all, if uh, once we know that it is, we're going to monitor that bleaching. From analysis of the data we've already received, we've been able to identify some potentially resilient sites throughout the reef. For instance, one potentially resilient site is within the conservation zone of the Kikaka Marine Reserve. In October, 08 corals in this area only showed signs of peeling, which is the first stage in coral bleaching, while other monitored site corals were partly bleached and even whole bleached. The corals at Kikaka returned to normal by January 09, but at other sites, coral exhibited signs of bleaching through March. The fact that these corals recover quickly is what makes them a potentially resilient site and warrants our continued protection. Those sites are targeted or are specially conserved, maybe in no-take zones or in special areas where they have less impacts from other things. So a lot of the, the resilient sites we're trying to put into kind of no-take areas where there's less fishing pressure, where there's some of those other, fish, other pressures that we can actually reduce um, are being reduced. What we will be doing with the information is putting it, incorporating it into our coastal plan so that we can be more proactive in knowing where um, bleaching events are more susceptible to happen and what we can do to prevent it in terms of uh, where we can put more, most of our efforts in protecting it. As you know, the reef area in Belize is very big, and in order to get accurate data, we need to get more reports from more parts of Belize. We are volunteers with the Coral Watch program. Why don't you join us? It's fun, easy to do, and it gives us all a chance to be a part of helping to conserve Belize's magnificent coral reefs. To learn more about the Coral Watch program, look for this logo at participating dive and snorkel centers, or contact Ecomar in Belize. See you in the water! There is also a Coral Watch training DVD available at participating dive and snorkel centers throughout Belize.